Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Saurabh Dixit and today I have got a very interesting small topic for you. So as per promise, I keep on bringing new important topics for your revision. And today we are going to discuss a very confusing topic that is the tension pneumothorax. So we will try to understand a basic concept of tension pneumothorax. So when we talk about tension pneumothorax, what is the most important thing that we all need to understand in context with tension pneumothorax? Because we tend to get confused what is tension pneumothorax, what is a simple pneumothorax and then we start making mistakes. So let us try to understand what is a tension pneumothorax. In a very layman's language you can say tension pneumothorax is any pneumothorax. So if in any pneumothorax there is a component of hypotension then that is known as tension pneumothorax. So pneumothorax plus hypotension. Remember students, hypotension word is a hallmark feature of this. If hypotension is not there, it could be anything but not what students, not a tension pneumothorax. Why this hypotension occurs? The answer is because of cardiogenic shock, that is compressive cardiogenic shock. So as the chapter passes on, we will read a lot of important things about tension pneumothorax. Now what is the concept of this tension pneumothorax? It's again very, very, very important for us to understand the concept. Now. There are two pleuras, one is visceral and another one is parietal pleura. So here there is injury, so there is injury to visceral pleura. And do you know when there is injury to visceral pleura, there is one very important change which happens is that the injured part of the pleura, the injured part of the visceral pleura acts like a what? Acts like a flutter wall. So in this case the injured pleura, the injured pleura acts like acts like flutter wall and this is what is very 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 important very important so the injured pleura acts like a flutter wall now what is the concept of wall a wall is a structure which will allow a unidirectional flow so it will not allow the reverse flow to happen so this leads to this leads to entry and not only entry plus entrapment so there is not only entry but also the entrapment of air into the pleural cavity and when there is entrapment of air into the pleural cavity there is unnecessary expansion of the pleural cavity. Normally the pleural cavity doesn't have that space because it is having a negative or 0 mm Hg pressure. So this leads to expansion of pleural cavity and because of the expansion of pleural cavity all the complications now will arise. Now what are the complications that happen? Let us try to understand it in form of an, in terms of an, you can say illustrative concept of diagrams. Let us see, let us see. So what are the complications that happen? Before that, let us try to understand how the scenario starts. So this is the normal lung which we can see in front of us. And you know, this is the pressure inside the lung. So we will say P lung and this is always positive. P lung is always positive. Now you understand that this is what is known as pleural cavity and the pressure inside the pleural cavity. So I can say P pleural cavity is either negative or 0 mm Hg. This is very 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 simple and this helps to create a good pleuropulmonary gradient. Now what has happened in this case, in this case there is injury to the visceral pleura. You know this is one, this one is parietal pleura and the inner one is visceral pleura. So whenever there is injury to visceral pleura, what happens, try to understand this. This is very, very simple. In the initial hours, this is how the injured segment is looking like. So you can see that this is the injured segment. So this injured segment acts like a what? Flutter wall. Now what is the concept of the flutter wall? It will flutter off, but it will not allow the flow in the two directions. Only one directional flow is allowed. Now try to understand. Since the pressure inside the lung is more than the pressure inside the pleural cavity, the air will start to enter into this pleural cavity. And when the air enters, the space will expand, the pressure will increase. As you know that fluids have a rule of transferring or you can say moving from a high pressure zone to low pressure zone. So slowly and slowly the air will go into the pleural cavity. When the air goes into the pleural cavity, the pleural cavity will expand and there will be a time when the pressure of the pleural cavity is more than the pressure of the lung. Now the air wants to go back. But this backward movement is not allowed. Why? Because of a wall. 
now see what is the catastrophe which is going to happen so now this this is the scenario so the plural cavity has expanded and because of the expansion of the plural cavity now you can see the pressure inside the plural cavity has built up to all positive so earlier it was negative now it is positive and now because of this the first thing that has happened is there is the collapse of ipsilateral lung so what has happened first answer is collapse of ipsilateral lung now because of the collapse of ipsilateral lung the first thing that you are going to see is there is increase in respiratory distress we all mug up these things there is increase in respiratory distress and also there is decrease in breath sounds why there is decrease in breath sounds it's very very simple and obvious because the lung has collapsed on that side the second thing that you are going to see here is normally the diaphragm is what dome shape so here the second thing that has happened is flattening of diaphragm now because of the flattening of diaphragm there is a component of respiratory distress so the respiratory distress again increases why because of the flattening of the diaphragm the third thing is that there is air in between the two layers of the pleura now try to understand whenever you order something online the consignment that you get is wrapped in an air bubble so what is the concept of air bubble in between the two air bubble wrap in between the two plastic sheets the air is entrapped in form of trabeculees and that is why when you press them there is a chit or eggshell crackling like sound so similarly in our body also since the body is arranged in layers there are fine fibrous connections in between so if the air percolates it will generate that same air bubble trap or air bubble like wrap like appearance so whenever you press so what will happen there will be an eggshell crackling sound and this phenomena is known as subcutaneous emphysema now there are lot of people who will argue with this that sir it is not subcutaneous so students you have to understand that word subcutaneous the word subcutaneous is a misnomer this phenomena can happen in 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 between any two layers however it is more prominent on the superficial layers that is why it is known as subcutaneous emphysema also the classical egg shell crackling sound that you get so the egg shell crackling sound the egg shell crackling sound that you get this is what is known as hummans crunch so this is what is again very important so this is a hummans crunch so what is hummans crunch yes this is the egg shell when you press on the chest or thorax you get the chit chit sound this is what is very 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 important now the lung is becoming fatter why because the air is accumulating in the pleural cavity so lung will this pathological lung will require what some extra space and in that space you can say requirement it will tend to push the heart laterally why it will tend to push the heart because on one side you have the rib cage you cannot expand beyond the rib cage so this lung requires more space so it is asking the heart to shift laterally heart you move lateral you move lateral heart being a noble structure will try to move lateral but do you know what will happen there will be opposite lung also so the opposite normal lung the opposite normal lung will never allow this so this is the normal lung so this is the normal lung which will never allow and thus there is compression of the heart in between two lungs so what is going to happen there is compression there is compression of heart of heart in between two lungs now when there is compression of heart in between two lungs students what will happen there are two ironical steps which are going to happen the preload and afterload both will yes so there will be change in the preload so there is increased back pressure so when there is increased back pressure students what will happen due to this increased back pressure there will be engorgement of the jugular veins so there is increase cvp and thus you get to see those classical engorged neck veins neck veins also due to this lateralization there is deviation of the trachea also so there is devi tracheal deviation so tracheal deviation to opposite side so all these things are very synergistic and they are happening because the pathological lung wants more space so tracheal deviation to the opposite side again what else if you compress the heart the blood is not going to enter so what will happen to the cardiac output so there will be drastic decrease in the cardiac output and if there is decrease in the cardiac output this is going to manifest in the form of hypotension so you can also say 
that this tension pneumothorax is happening because of the compression of the heart which is not allowing the heart to function properly students if the heart is not functioning properly you can say this is a state of cardiogenic shock and this is because of the compression so you can say that tension pneumothorax is any pneumothorax where there is compressive cardiogenic shock remember if compressive cardiogenic shock is there not there it is not going to be called as tension pneumothorax now this is the early phase now what happens in the late phase in the late phase in the late phase we all have seen that there is a compression of the heart so the lung is actually expanding and there is excess lateral traction on the heart so there is excess lateral traction on the heart but heart cannot desperately go to the other side also why because the opposite lung is there so due to excessive lateral traction of the heart you know there is partial twist there is partial twist of the heart of heart on the axis of on axis of vena cava so when there is partial twist of heart on the axis of vena cava it's very simple to understand try to understand this microphone so i'm pushing it laterally i'm pushing it laterally just see it's going laterally lateral lateral and beyond the limit it will actually twist off so it is going to twist so there is partial twist of the you can say heart on the axis of the vena cava and this is going to lead to what kinking of vena cava and if there is kinking of the vena cava what will happen there will be obstruction to the inflow so there is obstruction to the inflow and if the heart is not getting the blood inside what is this this is again going to lead to pump failure now this time this will be known as obstructive cardiogenic shock so you can say that compressive and obstructive both are seen in tension pneumothorax remember tension pneumothorax is a unique entity where you get to see both the early features are due to compressive now because of this obstructive cardiogenic shock you will get arrhythmia and because of this arrhythmia students you know that there will be mortality of the patients and this is what is very 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 important so death in tension pneumothorax is due to compressive no it is due to obstructive cardiogenic shock so this game is about only one thing that air is entering inside but it is not getting a way out so what is the management it is very 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 simple try to understand the treatment of choice or this is also the definite treatment answer is you allow the air to vent out of the pleural cavity so that the pleuropulmonary gradient is reestablished so what we can do you can insert a tube so tube into the thorax and you are connecting it so that is known as tube thoracostomy so remember students tube thoracostomy this is what is very 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 important and this is done at fifth intercostal space via triangle of safety why via triangle of safety because it is going to result in minimum collateral injury this is what is very 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 important try to understand what we are doing so this is the lung imagine this is the lung this is the injured pleura and what we are going to do we are going to insert a chest drain now the most important thing about this chest drain is it should be under the water seal why it is kept under the water seal it's very 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 important for you to understand because if you don't keep it under water seal the air from outside will communicate into the thorax and this is going to result in open version of pneumothorax so when you are inspiring the air is going inside and from here it is going into the pleural cavity and then it is going to move out into the tube and remember there will be an air fluid column here so if you see whenever you are inspiring whenever you are inspiring and expiring with every respiratory movement the air fluid column is moving and if this column of air fluid is not fluctuating that means you have not put the tube in the right direction so this is what is very 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 important the fluctuation is a benchmark that yes you have positioned it correctly so next is next is in case of emergency so in emergency you can say in unstable patients you know whenever you have to insert this chest drain you will require to position the patient give local anesthesia do the procedure it will take 20 25 minutes to finished off by that time there could be a possibility that compressive converts into obstructive and arrhythmia and the patient dies so in case of unstable patients what you have to do this is what is very 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 important in these patients you allow the air to come out quickly and how you can do this so this is the you can say suppose the lung suppose this is the lung 
so you can bring a needle you can you have a spinal anesthesia needle also you can bring a spinal anesthesia needle and allow the extra air to vent off so the air will come out this pleural cavity will again collapse and the lung will parietal pleura uh, the pleura the visceral pleura will again expand the lung will gain its volume and now you get some time so remember you don't have to put the needle and then place it there only this is an emergency management so what you are doing in the emergency in the emergency you are connecting the thorax with the needle so needle thoracostomy remember this is also done at fifth intercostal space fifth intercostal space remember in kits in kits it's your preference we prefer the fifth intercostal space over the second intercostal space along the mid clavicular line now why mid clavicular line because it is easier to access but why not because it is far more challenging in terms of iatrogenic injury the second thing is that once you have inserted the needle definite is you will again have to put the tube so when you have to put the tube by a fifth why not put the needle also by a fifth this is what is very 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 important so tube thoracostomy is now so emergency management and the definite management is followed by tube thoracostomy so if someone asks you in exam also what is the definite management for in unstable patient then then also your answer will be tube thoracostomy because ultimately you have to put a tube so meanwhile in order to buy some time you can insert a needle so this is what is very 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 important so i hope you enjoyed this lecture this small crisp topic do subscribe to my channel do share the link of my video with your friends and do comment in the comment section how you like the video and any topic which you want me to record for you thank you